The unraveling has begun. You didn't think it was a coincidence, did you? I mean, come on, we've had so much weird infighting and drama at the start of this year. It certainly had to be planned out by someone or something. Man, taking a look at this story from Deadline, State of the Union TV viewership falls 29% to 27.3 million, according to Nielsen. People aren't even watching the president anymore. I wonder where everybody went. You know, not only that, as I mentioned, it feels like everything's kind of coming unraveled. You've got all this weird drama. You got Daily Wire and Stephen Crowder. You've got me, obviously, and everybody who's complaining about that. You got uh, James O'Keefe being put on paid leave from Project Veritas. I mean, we'll talk about uh, that a a bit more later on. But everything's just unraveling. You know, it's like we live in a simulation or something, and it's all just going belly up. But I really do have questions about this. I mean, where are people going? Are they just not watching the State of the Union anymore? I mean, where are they? Last year, with the previous State of the Union, I think it was last year, you had, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure, 30, uh, you know, let me just pull up the stats. I think it was uh, 38.2 million, which actually was was an uptick from 2021. Now, to understand this, 2021 was not a State of the Union. It's an inaugural address. That's why they put an asterisk, asterisk on them, but it's a presidential address to the nation. So it's very similar. So when Joe Biden gets elected, it's only 26.9 million. It was even lower. Then you have the first State of the Union. And, th- and this one makes sense. I, 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 I thought Biden like skipped one or something. I don't know. It was delayed. That's what it was. It was like the longest delay since Jimmy Carter or something like that. But then you have uh, his next one, which is 38 million. So we're like, hey, OK, that's, that's pretty good. Under Donald Trump, there was a resurgence because during, during Obama, you know, it's down to the 30s. Trump gets elected. It's 31. Then Trump has three State of the Union addresses, 47.7 million, 45.6, 46.8. And this is where I think it, this is what I think matters to bring up in this context, because people might try and make the argument that the reason the ratings are down for Joe Biden in his State of the Union address has to do with changing viewership patterns and all that. But that's not true. The previous year was 38.2. People really were interested to see what he had to say. And they watched and didn't watch as much as they watched Donald Trump or, you know, Barack Obama in his first term. But they watched. But this time around, they ain't watching. And there's a huge drop off here. It makes me wonder. There's a lot of things that are going on that make me wonder, you know, and certainly everybody says we live in a, or not everybody, but a lot of people say we live in a simulation, but it really does feel coordinated and planned. Like, how is all this drama happening right now, right at the start of this year? Isn't that weird? Haven't you thought that's weird? It's weird, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. It does feel like it's unraveling. And one of the things I've been talking about with jobs, uh, with, with a lack of employment and homelessness System must be busted. I think the system is busted, and I think the information we're getting is probably busted as well. And so, you know, y'all come to me, and I try my best to break down the, what's really going on, but it's all based on the same reporting. You know, so CNN will come out and say X, Y, and Z, and then I'll find out it's actually X, Y, and 2, and the Z was actually fake news. But everybody still believes the X and the Y. You know what I mean? Like ABC, here are the variables. And I'm like, hey, B's actually not correct. CNN's lying, but certain elements we understand to be true. How do we know any of it's true? We really don't. I mean, for the news team over at TimCast.com, we do boots on the ground reporting, quite literally boots on the ground. But then I also mean like the, the grunt work of making the phone calls, getting comments and fact checking. So we try to make sure as much as possible is true and correct. But it really does feel like to me, the system is unraveling. The reason I bring that point up, and, and, and we'll read this and I'll talk about it. You know, people uh, are, 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 are these, these polls are coming out, Axios, Gallup. People are way worse off now than they've ever been. But I remember talking about, uh, I think it was Memorial Day last year. We went to go see a movie and there was nobody anywhere. Just there was, we went to the, we went to this big shopping center, this big mall, like strip mall, not like, you know, indoor mall. Not, nobody was anywhere. I'm looking around, I'm like, where, where did everybody go? No, for real. Like, where, did, did they get raptured? Think about this. Twitter numbers are way down. Retweets and engagement are gone. Is, it, is something happening? Something happening we don't know about? I don't know. I don't know. It feels weird, though, doesn't it? Joe Biden's State of the Union viewership falls 30%. That's interesting. Is it really that nobody cares about the president anymore and what's happening in this country? Perhaps. 
But at the same time, why is it that everyone's complaining on Twitter that they're not getting any engagement anymore? Is it a coincidence that there's nobody to fill jobs? Is it a coincidence that nobody's watching TV? Is it a coincidence that people are saying their views are down? Is it a coincidence that people are saying they're not getting any engagement on social media? All these things are coincidences. Or I'm just saying, you know, did the rapture happen? I don't know, because I didn't see anybody floating up naked into the sky. That's the joke I told Seamus Coglin when we're looking at these stores struggling to hire people. Ratings plummeting. Where is everybody? Maybe we really do live in a simulation and they're winding it down. It's an MMORPG and uh, it's, it's on its last leg. Earth has been in, you know, it's, it's been running for thousands of years and they're just tired and they're like, look, man, the game's run its course. We, we don't even know what to do anymore. Think about like the first release, Humanity 1.0, this really great game where you're in, you know, ancient Babylon or Sumeria and you're farming and it's really fun and they keep patching and updating. It's kind of like World of Warcraft. You know, at a certain point, I'm just like, I don't know if you guys ever played World of Warcraft. At a certain point, I'm like, the game doesn't work anymore. I'm bored. It just doesn't work. It, the original run was fun. You get all these expansions. You get European expansion, Earth expansion number 700, colonial Europe, and then like colonization expansion. Then you get the United States and you get the world wars. And now the writers are just like, I don't I don't even, I, we can do like a Trump Biden thing. We can do like a left versus right thing. We can do a culture war thing. Really, we're just out of ideas. And so people are leaving the game. It's getting boring. I mean, in all seriousness though, like, like, I don't know the actual reason, but for real, let me ask you this question. Why did we just have all this drama erupt literally in the past, like two or three weeks? For real. Like James O'Keefe just got ousted from Project Veritas. Why? That's weird. You know, I'm, I'm having my thing where I'm like, unfollow me. I don't care anymore. That's just me, I guess. And then you've got uh, the Daily Wire and Steven Crowder. Ratings are in decline. I don't know, man. It just really does feel weird. That's all I can really say. It just all feels weird. How's your morning going? I was just last night hanging out with a bunch of members of Congress. That was pretty fun. But it, it, it is really difficult outside of any kind of um, weird arguments about simulation theory and silliness like that. It is really hard to care about any of this stuff anymore. Politicians don't listen. People don't care about making the world a better place. Culture and ideologies are fractured and shattered across the board. And we're, we're, we're creating tribal pockets that are getting smaller and smaller. That's the thing to me about, I don't know if you guys watched my uh, segment yesterday at youtube.com slash Timcast. And all the people who unfollowed me saying, oh, you're turning on your fans or whatever. It's like, my, man, look, I got to tell you. It's just, it doesn't seem to, 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 to matter. You know, there, there are so many people that care about things that just don't, don't matter. You know, what do we do? You know, you know what I think matters? Let me show you this. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Axios reports. Half of Americans have the financial blues. The share of Americans who say they are financially worse off than a year ago. It's 50%. 50% of people now say they are worse off than they were a year ago. And last year, it was around 43%. And the year before, it was around 30, uh, 37%. And the year before, it was around 25%. Under Donald Trump, uh, it was uh, uh, going down. You can see right here in, in the Trump era, it's going down. I just don't know what's going on. I, I, I got to be honest. It just feels like people have lost interest in everything pertaining to any overarching culture. And I kind of feel like that's the intent. And that's why I made the joke, or was it a joke, that it's all planned and phase two begins now. I don't know if you saw the tweet. I said, you know, did you really think it was a coincidence? Steven Crowder and the Daily Wire, me and the quartering and Project Veritas and James O'Keefe. Phase two begins soon. No, I just think that um, there's not much to really care about. And that's the gosh darn truth. What do you care about? Seriously, comment. Do you care about, I don't know, the price of eggs? Do you care about free speech? Do you care about, uh, I don't know, internet drama? Do you care about me? It's kind of crazy. It's kind of weird. People don't seem to care about Joe Biden anymore. So what are they doing and what are they talking about? Are they tuning things out? Are people just saying, I'm out, I'm done? Maybe. Maybe that's what this really is. 
Let me show you this, too, because the interesting thing here is 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 young people. Deadline reports. President Joe Biden's State of the Union address drew an estimated 27.3 million viewers, a drop of 29 percent from last year. I round up, say 30. It's easier. That figure is the lowest audience for a State of the Union in at least 30 years. According to Nielsen Records, Biden's 20, 2021 speech to a joint session of Congress drew 26.9 million. But that event coming just a couple of months into his presidency was not an official State of the Union speech. The Nielsen figures were measured of 16 TV networks. Last year, 38.2 million watched across 16. Nielsen said that 59% watched broadcast network coverage and 41% watched cable coverage. Now, one thing, take this out. In the 25 to 54 year old demo, ABC posted 1.08 million viewers. That's pretty good. NBC with a million. Fox News with 846,000. CBS with 708,000. CNN with 646. MSNBC with 496. And Fox Broadcasting with 509,000. Well, they beat us. For the time slot, we had only 200,000 in the key demo. But you know, you know, we typically beat CNN and MSNBC in the key demo on any normal given night. And last night we had also around 200,000. So, hey, it is what it is. It was a late show, too, and it went long. So it is kind of jamming all their numbers into one time slot. Normally, their viewers are split up over the hour. But this was, you know, I think this actually was just an hour. So, you know, whatever. The audience for the State of the Union may have been impacted by TNT's NBA coverage. As LeBron James broke Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's NBA scoring record, the game started in the latter part of Biden's speech, according to... (laughs) Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it, honestly. People care more about that than anything else. I kind of don't believe it, though. But I suppose when you're worse off than you've been in a long time, take a look at this. In 2020, people said they were better off, 59%. That was during a pandemic. And then in January 2023, 50% say they're worse off. When you're worse off and things are bad, maybe you don't want to hear from the guy who's making it bad. Maybe you want to hear or you just want to tune it out. You want to watch basketball. Me? I kind of feel like it's all crumbling down. I feel like our culture is, is breaking apart. I feel like that's, uh, you, you can see it in Stop Big Con. You can see it in whatever stupid YouTube drama involving me is going on. Because it wasn't just the corner. There's a whole bunch of people. And now you can see with Project Veritas and James O'Keefe. Excuse me. After one of the most consequential expose days they've ever done, they put James O'Keefe on paid leave. Yeah, I got to be honest, man. It ain't fun. And, and, and it's hard to know what makes it all worth it. But I'll tell you, internet drama, I don't know, the, 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 the political tribalism, it's certainly not worth it. It's better to improve yourself, exercise, eat right, and focus on family than it is to focus on, focus on any of this stuff. The challenge I face in, is that, you know, when it comes to the drama Anything involving me, because it happens all the time, and I'm just, I'm just over it. I really don't care. I'm over it. Having, having people like you, have, you get media matters. They're actually not the worst. The Young Turks and whoever else just lie about you nonstop all day every day, and you're just like reality. There's no, there's no cohesive reality. Okay, these liberals, they're living in a fake world. But now you've got the further bifurcation. You've got everybody fighting everybody else. These three big drama moments happening in the past month. Everybody's fighting each other. The worldviews are fracturing. And I'm like, what does any of that matter? Are you going to be honest about what's going on? Or are you just going to say whatever you need to say and lie to your viewers in order to get clicks? Because that's just stupid. I'm over it, man. No, people are tuning out Joe Biden. People are tuning out the government. And there's a problem with that. What I want to focus on is why are your, why are your food costs so high? And if they keep going up, what are you going to do? What I want to focus on is, have you noticed how very few people there are when you walk around? Serious question. Have you noticed how very few people there are when you walk around? Go do that. Go to your, go to your main street. Go to your grocery store. Go to your shopping center. Where's everybody? Legit question. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying they're not coming out anymore at the very least. They're not taking jobs. Stores struggle to reopen. People aren't watching TV. The ratings are in the gutter. Where the, did everybody go? What are they doing? 
I've been asking this for the past couple of years. No idea. No idea. You know, there's a bunch of wild conspiracies you can believe in. Maybe people's lives are just so bad, they're getting back to the grind. But if that were the case, people would be working jobs. If people's lives really were worse off, like these polls are saying, wouldn't they be paying attention to Joe Biden? And wouldn't they be taking these jobs? But they're not. And we've ended the stimulus stuff. We're not giving out this money anymore. So where are people? And how? Well, Ian Crossland on Tim Castile brought up an interesting point. Homeless. Well, if they're homeless, they're not watching TV. If they're homeless, they're not working jobs. If they're homeless, they're not involved in the political conversation at all. So maybe that's what we're looking at. You and I, those of you who are watching, the, 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 the people on the life rafts, I guess, the Titanic took a hit, the ship is sinking, and many people are in the water desperate. And that's why homelessness is through the roof, mental illness, etc. And so they're tuned out. They are now outside the system. You're not going to be paying attention to a debate between Joe Biden and anybody else. You're not going to be paying attention to drama. People are then going to suffer ratings losses and they're going to lose their minds. Now, I don't know uh, how that, you know, creates a ripple effect into, say, like Stephen Crowder and the Daily Wire or anything like that. I can certainly tell you that it results in the drama pertaining to me in that people become desperate for traffic because nothing's getting clicks anymore. So they try and make shock content up. Then I simply respond by saying, y'all are crackpots. I don't care about make up your fake garbage all day and night. I'm not interested in participating in your drama. And then you get drama out of it. The last the last gasp, I guess, you know, is that it? You know, online viewership is is declining as it has been. And people become more and more desperate to generate views. I ain't going to do it, man. I tell you, you guys know it. I'll go live in a van down by the river if I have to. I would sleep in a tent under a bridge before I would bend the knee for any crackpot who made demands of me and told me I had to live a certain way. But maybe that's for a lot of people. Maybe they're just like, I don't want to be involved in this. And they'd rather go live in a tent under a bridge and just chill. Granted, I don't think you have to. I think there's opportunity in going to the middle of nowhere and raising some chickens, which is, of course, what I, what I talk about all the time. But I, I, I am curious as to where this all goes in 2023. I don't know. We got war. We got crazy news reporting that should probably be like the biggest story in the world you'd think would generate tens of millions of views for the news about Nord Stream being blown up by frogmen, Norway working with the United States. I think it was at Seymour Hersh reporting on that or something. The U.S., of course, denying it. But where's all that news? I don't know. What do people care about these days? Maybe we've gotten to the point where life's just too good. No, serious. Life is just too good. We got food at your beck and call. Drive five minutes and there's gasoline and there's food, anything you can think of. You can get avocados right now in Jan- in February, in January, in December. Winter strawberries. It's just so crazy. Maybe, maybe humans get to that point where we want for nothing and then we go through an existential crisis. I think that might be it. You know, I, I had a buddy who became extremely wealthy when he was a teenager he uh, created a software program. And uh, all of a sudden he was famous. He's meeting politicians. It was cybersecurity stuff. And then he ends up making several, his net worth jumps to like $4 million by the time he's 18. And he has no idea what to do. He told me that when this happens, people have an existential crisis. To go from having to work and, and, and work your hands to the bone, to being so wealthy you never have to work again, they take, st- they take pause and say, now what? What's the point of any of this? What am I doing? They lose cause. They lose purpose. We then end up seeing tribalism and internet drama because people are desperate for some kind of cause or purpose. I think that's what we're seeing now with all the drama igniting. There ain't any. We get it. Joe Biden sucks. The economy is bad. Things are getting worse. So people in their desperate attempt to fill their addiction to some kind of cause, fill that gap. Now you've got Project Veritas, you've got me, you've got uh, uh, Daily Wire and Crowder, you've got people, Eliza Blue, like they're desperate to be mad about something. Because what else are they going to talk about? I'd rather just not talk about any of it. Go play video games. That, this is why if you guys have, uh, have seen, you know, the, the drama stuff, I've been telling people like, if you're a crybaby, just get out. Don't follow me. I don't want your money. I don't need your money. I don't want to be famous. I don't want you to like me. I don't need you to know who I am. 
I did this segment yesterday talking about it, addressing like all these different channels. Because I, I just feel like too many people are desperate for something to care about. Well, maybe I just gave them something to care about, I guess. I understand the irony of being like drama is dumb and then making drama. But hey, of all the people who talk about it, I talk about it the least. So I get my, I get my one, you know, time to talk about it. But that's what I really feel. I, I feel like we know everything's bad. There's nothing we can do about it. Complaining about it for the hundredth time won't do anything. I skipped my 4 p.m. segment on Friday last week because there was nothing to talk about. And I'm not going to make some stupid garbage drama video just to fill time. They were talking about Joe Biden and the document scandal over and over and over again. At a certain point, I'm like, we get it. I just don't care anymore. We know. And where do you go from there? That's the question. When it comes to the ratings for Joe Biden, when it comes to drama and conflict, where do you go when we know Joe Biden's corrupt, the media lies, wokeness is bad? Where do you go? Well, people start pointing at each other. That's apparently the best way to go about doing it. It's like, well, you know, I'll, I'll complain about something. And that opens the door to bot farms and PR firms. And it is really easy. It is really easy. You know, man, I got half a mind to just take my van and go down by the river. Mark my words. Because I've been talking about that for some time. And uh, it's, no, it's no idle threat. The, 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 the obsession with needing something to complain about is just so pathetic. You know, I'm just not into it. If that's what if that's what the next era is going to be in, ter- in this year, in terms of media or whatever, is just complaining about inconsequential things or infighting. Count me out. Yo, you know, there are people who live in this weird world. They really do live in this weird world where they they think everybody wants the same thing they do. They think, you know, you've got these this, this, this drama YouTube stuff. You've got media matters. You've got partisan tribalism where they call everybody grifters. And I'm like, yeah, you know what, man? You want to know who the real grifters are? It's the people who are making videos with shock titles and content to try and drum up clicks. And perhaps you'll say, Tim, you do that, too. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm innocent. I'm just going to say, yeah, probably. And I often self-reflect in that regard. But it's just so mind-numbing when it's stretched beyond all reasonable, all recognition. Like, come on, man. If I make a video and say, like, you know, Biden document scandal expose, you know, Biden leaked emails expose, you know, uh, collusion, uh, illicit business dealings with China. I'm like, that literally happened. That literally is my opinion on what this is. But what if I made a video where it's like proof Joe Biden so- sells out United States to, uh, uh, to China and is traitor. You know what I mean? I mean, even then, it's kind of like, okay, fine. I get it. But then you start getting people who are just so desperate. They're like, let's talk about each other. Okay, fine. Whatever, man. I'm not interested. I'm really not. You know? And this is my point. It's kind of interesting. I did this big thing. It was like an hour long yesterday complaining. You get, you know, just uh, what I, that's what I do on the internet. I whinge. I complain for a living. Welcome to Timcast. And I'm talking about, you know, uh, um, the Young Turks, Hassan, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, you know, the quartering, Sam Cedar, these people who just like, why do you care about me? I mean, man, imagine doing having a job where you complain about somebody who complains about things. That's the recursion that I'm just like the recursive loop where I'm just like, we are truly all of us despicable. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you do, but humans must be entertained, I guess. So, but I, I, I see this, right? The, the, the ratings for, for Joe Biden. And I'm like, people don't care, man. They don't care. And I don't care. So I'm right there with you. I suppose people aren't watching his state of the union address. That's what we covered. We, we did that show. What do people care about? I'm willing to bet the Super Bowl ratings this Sunday aren't going to be that good. I mean, they'll be okay, but I bet they're going to go down. Because it feels like people are just tuning out from everything. They're not working jobs. They're not paying attention to politics. They're not paying attention to pop culture. Seems like they all got raptured. And maybe that's it. Maybe they're all just dying suddenly. And that's why we're seeing so many news reports. I don't know. Maybe. Perhaps, perhaps not. I'll just tell you, man. The one thing you can count on from me is I'm just going to tell you exactly what I think.
And uh, especially now, I'm, I'm real done being nice and pulling punches for people. You know, if, they're, if, if I'm just, it's whatever, man. You know, perhaps, I'll, I'll say this early on, there's always a fear everybody has of some kind of cancel culture. And you want to make sure that you're right and you're not wrong. And, uh, and that is for people on the left, it's like, oh, you can't play Hogwarts Legacy because, oh, geez, you're transphobic or whatever. Go, go live in your stupid world where you're living under the boot of a mob. I won't do it. But the right has it too. You know, Tim Pool, complain about Eliza Blue or also unfollow you. I don't care. Dude, cancel me. I don't care. Unfollow me. Unsubscribe. You know, if you thought you were going to come to this channel and I'm going to be somebody or, or at any point who is going to play the same game as those people, I just don't care, man. I'm so sick of the fakeness. I'm so sick of the BS, you know. So let's figure out what we can do. Let's figure out how to make people care about this stuff. Maybe you can't. Maybe we're just market saturated with media content like this. So if that's the case, I don't know, we'll watch a skate show. We'll just do whatever. Podcast market saturation. How about that? There's just too much. Anybody can listen to anything at any time and get whatever opinion they want. Pick your opinion. It's there for you. You want to hear someone parrot back your thoughts to you? You can find it. Congratulations. They're there. They exist. You want to be, you want to feel angry about something so there's cause in your life? Hey, I'm right here, buddy. Be mad at me. Fine. I don't care. I just kind of feel like maybe the implosion happened and maybe we will now go back to people worrying about family, but maybe that's it too. Maybe people don't have family, so they're just desperately trying to find some kind of mission. I don't know. Maybe it popped. We'll see. I'll leave it there. Uh, next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, I guess. Uh, we'll probably talk about Project Veritas and stuff. Should be interesting. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for sticking with me. And uh, see you all then.